We are back. Welcome. Well, come on inside and get yourself something cool to drink. This is what we got on tap for you today. First of all, appreciate y'all for being here. Shake my hands to Whitey Cop. Greetings, all that good stuff. Um, I was tapped on the shoulder, man. You know, I was I was tapped on the shoulder today, and Bleach Report wanted me to do uh some all 32 content. And that's that's perfectly fine because it's draft season and pretty much everything I do is all 32 content. So I'm just trying to find a way to sneak my way on to the NFL draft tab. <laughs> Dom, the Marco, the Marco. Appreciate you, Bleach Report producer that snuck me into the draft tab. So I've been trying to find my way onto the draft tab. And um, I figure what better way to sneak myself onto the draft tab than to do a mock draft okay or, or or to react to a mock draft let me just let me just correct myself to react to a mock draft give some analysis on some picks check out something that i may think is interesting disrespect the pick that i think is nonsense and what better what better mock draft to break down on the bleach report app in the draft tab and the nfl tab and the cowboy tab what better mock draft to break down than the bleach report mock draft Did you hear what i said <laughs> So let me just say this first and foremost. Hey, I don't want no smoke with nobody. Shouts out to everybody on the Bleach Report tab. If you made a particular pick and I think it is something else, do not attack me. Okay? Do not attack me. I'm not just going to give a miscellaneous thought and opinion. I'm going to give a breakdown on the player, whether I love the pick or whether I hate the pick. And um, I actually got filmed the show today. I'm draft guy and I normally come prepared with 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 film so if i'm saying something good about a player i normally have a couple of clips to where i can prove what i like about that player but boy if i think a player is horrific boy i got film for that too i appreciate y'all for being here i'm your host Vach lombardi by the way hey Vachi. v-o-c-h-l-o-n-b-a-r-d-i i appreciate y'all for being here let's get into it man uh let's see shots out of bleach report let's go uh share my screen boom boom it's that boom boom bap all right, cool. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now, like, hey, man, no hard feelings, man. Shouts out to whoever this is over at the Bleach Report app, man. I don't want no smoke, man. I just want to know if you, uh, you know, if you bought your business. I just want to know what the what the business is. So this is from the Bleach Report NFL Scouting Department. So if I could just put my my thinking cap on and just kind of guess, that sounds like multiple people. That sounds like three to four. To possibly five people so hopefully i ain't up here upsetting three to four to five people but if i do man I, you know we, we could talk about it we could talk about it all right so here we go um and, and of course i'm not gonna waste y'all picks too 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 much okay or waste y'all time too too much because for example caleb williams to the uh to the bears there i'm not gonna waste y'all time with caleb williams to the bears we all know caleb williams is going to the bears the bears should have held these quarterback needy teams at ransom and they should have got a gang of picks that can, you know, fix their franchise over the next five to six years. I had a stream over on Bleach Report. Let me see. Can I go back here? I had a stream on on um, Bleach Report, and I was like, hey, is Caleb Williams a bear or is he Herschel Walker? That was a fantastic stream there, but y'all can cross that bridge. Y'all can go back and look whenever y'all want to. I was trying to find – oh, there, there you go. My picture of Herschel Walker there. I was trying to – you know what I'm saying? I was, you know, Bears fans, I was trying to make the argument that, you know, hey, you can either get what they got, a, a, a like a day three pick for Justin Fields. I was like, hey, you can either get a day three pick for Justin Fields or you can get all the picks for Kayla Williams, but they're going to roll with Kayla Williams. And I don't hate it. You know, the quarterback market is is terrible. It's, it's, it's horrific. So, hey, go get your dude if that's your dude. But let's just keep going. Let me turn me down on the phone there. Cool. Boom. Um... And the Washington Football Wizards, they're going to take Drake May from North Carolina. Funny enough here, right? Uh, as of the past couple of weeks, we've been seeing a little bit of a news, some some chirping, some room. Um, J.J. McCarthy could be the second overall pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chet, as a Cowboy fan, I'm going to be one smiling mother if, if damn Dan Quinn draft J.J. McCarthy number two overall to be the Washington football Wizards quarterback of the future. Now, nine times out of 10, that ain't going to happen. Nine times out of 10, that ain't going to happen. This could be a Mac Jones type of thing, all right? We're just putting smoke out there, putting chum in the water. This could be a Mac Jones type of thing, right? So I'm not going to say that they really believe 
that they really believe that J.J. McCarthy should be going number two overall. And I'm kind of glad that nobody in this particular mock draft from the Bleach Report scouting department thinks that J.J. McCarthy should go number two overall because I hate to be disrespectful and say, oh, you think J.J. McCarthy number two overall? And then I, I probably hit this button. You know you like to get wet, though. What's wet? Butt naked. Ill. Turn. Dust. BCB. Yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't have had nothing n- nothing nice to say about anybody that thinks J.J. McCarthy should go number two overall. I don't think it's going to happen, but boy, would it be a celebration in my household if that was the case. But Drake May belongs there. And honestly, I don't think J.J. McCarthy should go top 15. Keep it a buck here. If we just, if we being honest, I think Will Levis last year was a better prospect than J.J. McCarthy. I'm not going to lie to you. If you watch J.J. McCarthy highlights, it's going to look like this. This is me handing something to somebody else. That's all J.J. McCarthy did. That's, that's all he did, I promise. He made some throws, and he is very mobile, but for the most part, I saw J.J. McCarthy do this right now. I saw him. Don't ask me why I got a screwdriver. I, I just, <laughs> I saw him hand the football to other people, right? Even if you look at uh, Michigan's receivers, right? Because Roman Wilson is a is a player that I think highly of, and he's probably going to be like a day two guy, second, third round pick wide receiver from Michigan, Roman Wilson, but but dog, he only had like 40 some odd catches for 300 some yards. And Roman Wilson's way more talented than that. I'm not using this as a time to poo poo on JJ McCarthy. I'm just taking this a time to poo poo on the draft Illuminati that got y'all thinking that JJ McCarthy is possibly about to be the second overall pick. Y'all ain't got a lot of me. Y'all ain't got a lot of me. And Jaden Daniels still around, man. Please, man. Please. Jaden Daniels goes goes to the New England Patriots. We'll see what that looks like when it gets there. Um, Brother Marvin goes to the Arizona Cardinals. It's interesting because we've been seeing a lot more rumblings that some teams may favor um, neighbors over Harrison. I love Marvin Harrison, but me personally, I like I like um, neighbors a little more. Um, neighbors from LSU, right? What I like about Malik Neighbors more than Marvin is um, it, it just depends on what kind of wide receiver fan you are, right? If you like yak guys, if you like the dynamic guys, the quicker part in the sun, it's, if you like the yak guys, the dynamic guys, the quick dudes, the line you up all over the formation dudes, then yeah, Neighbors is is, is probably going to be your guy. Um, and I love Marvin, and Marvin is, is humongous. I would have loved to have seen him run in real life. We seen him run on the football field, and of course he's a he's a good running big dude. But he was projected to be a four three guy. I would have loved to have seen Marvin Harrison at some pro day or at some combine run a four three. Because if I'd have, if if I would have seen Marvin run the four three, I'd be like, all right, cool. Then that's warranted. But I know Malik Neighbors can fly, and his film says he can fly. Projections say that Marvin Harrison is faster than Malik, but boy, that ain't what the film say. That ain't what the film say at all. Let me get my film ready, man, just in case. Hold on, man, because y'all may think I'm. Y'all may think I'm lying about this whole film thing. I just want to, you know, have this stuff to back up what I'm saying. So anyway, Marvin Harrison goes uh, to the Arizona Cardinals at number four overall. That's a good pick for them. That's a good pick for them. Uh, The L.A. Chargers. The L.A. Chargers who drafted offensive line very recently with Rashawn Slater. I like Rashawn Slater, um, but they get a brand new head coach, one that loves to run the football. So it makes a little bit of sense that Joe Alt is your pick right here. Now, Chad, let me just talk to you about the Chargers pick, right? And for all my Bleach Report people backstage or whatnot, y'all can chop this up and throw it in the Chargers film. I don't know. We'll see. But should should the Chargers pick right here or should they trade back? Should they pick right here or should they trade back? Because there's a piece of me. First and foremost, let me just say this. I am a um I am a Fuaga fan. Like Talisi Fuaga is my tackle number one. But we ain't talking about Fuaga right now. We're, we're just talking about Joe Alt. So in my mind, you draft Joe Alt, he's not gonna be a left tackle anymore because Rashawn Slater, who is one of my favorite offensive linemen in recent history, is gonna be manning your left tackle. Now, of course, you can take you can take Joe Alt and, and put him at right tackle, and that O line would be scary because um I believe our guy Zion, not Williamson, Zion Johnson. They just drafted him not too long ago. He's probably playing left guard over there, Slater at left tackle. I know they got a center that's worth talking about. I just forgot his name. And then you got Joe Alt to come in and play right tackle. I don't even know if Joe Alt can play right tackle, but he seems to be a character that has the feet that can switch both sides of the offensive line, which is fine to me. Um, but should they be going wide receiver? Because you do have Justin Herbert at the end of the day. I will say this. 
you have to consider what's what's best for your team. Okay, you can be like, all right, I want a championship in Michigan running the football. That's cool, but you ran the football because your ass had a JJ McCarthy playing. <laughs> Hold on, now. did you hear what I said? You hear what I said? You ran the football because you had JJ McCarthy playing quarterback. Okay, we're in the league now. Okay, I don't think you're gonna be as run footbally because you got a Justin Herbert at quarterback now, and Keenan Allen is playing with the dude that just left USC. That's the number one overall pick now. So. Mike Williams, coming off ACL, by the way, is he even still there? I know a lot has happened in free agency, and I got to, like, you know, keep eyes on it. But um, the Chargers ain't got a whole bunch of wide receivers right now, right? So this could be wide receiver. This could be Roma Dunze. This could be um, neighbors. But I could also see offensive line. So if you the Chargers, do you trade back here? Because if you have a Justin Herbert and you got a brand-new coach, and you probably want to redo a lot of picks on your team. You probably want to turn the whole roster around, right? I think the Chargers are a team. Let me see if I can do this on the fly. I think the Chargers are a team that should be in the trade back conversation. All right, cool. Boom. How about this? Because I went to, to um, just to just to get a good idea of teams are quarterback needy. I know that there could be a big ransom at the top of the board, but man, what if the, what if one of these teams really like JJ McCarthy for real? What if one of these teams really, really like J.J. McCarthy for real? And if I'm the Chargers, I'm calling the Vikings, bro. If I'm And, and look, this ain't me thinking that J.J. McCarthy's all that. I just know that in this world where quarterback play is, is especially scarce and terrible, if I'm the Chargers and I got a big roster turnaround to think about because the Chargers aren't like the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are going to be bad again next year. But the Chargers have an opportunity to – make a little run with this thing, right? So, like, they're a playoff team. Technically. <laughs> I know Justin Herbert is a godsend to a lot of y'all, but boy, you know what I'm saying? So, I think that the Chargers, in my personal opinion, I think they should be they should be calling, you know, or not Atlanta, not Tennessee, blah, blah, blah. They should, they should be calling the Giants. None of my like Daniel Jones like that, even though J.J. McCarthy might be Daniel Jones. They should be calling the Vikings. They should be calling the Broncos. They should be calling all these teams that's on this list, except the, the Colts or whatever. They, they should be calling somebody to go and get a quarterback. And I, I don't think it's J.J. McCarthy, but if y'all like it, I love it. But they should be tapping into these dudes like, hey, man, I'll give you everything I got. I'll give you everything I got for a shot at one of these guys, okay? But it's all good. We'll just get back into the get back to the situation. I think the uh, Chargers have a really interesting opportunity here. And hell, if you the Chargers and you trade back to 11 or so, then you're still in Brian Thomas Jr. territory. You're some people think Roma Dunze is going to fall. He shouldn't, but you're in that territory still. So, you know, hey, Chargers, something to think about. Something to think about. But then you got Roma Dunze that's going number six to uh, the New York Giants there. Now, I, I want... How many times the New York Giants are going to just keep drafting wide receiver until they really feel like, man, you know, you know, quarterback is a problem. <laughs> like quarterback is a problem. Like I just remember them bringing in Kenny Galladay and Galladay was a dude prior to being with the Giants. And I remember them bringing in Darren Waller and Darren Waller was a dude prior to the Giants. And, you know, Brian Dayball is a guy that was fantastic when he had Josh Allen, but that don't mean Brian Dayball is going to be fantastic because he got, uh, Daniel Jones or whatnot. So I just wonder how many of these guys can you bring in? You drafted Jalen Hyatt last year, right? How many pass catchers can you bring in for the Giants before you you truly figure out that Daniel Jones ain't your guy, and that the Giants should be trying to do everything in their power to move up to get one of these one of these quarterbacks here? I mean, I don't know. It's up to y'all. It's up to y'all. Uh, but Malik Neighbors, I'm about to cuss it out on the Bleach Report scouting staff here. But uh, Malik Neighbors falling down to seven. After Rome, after Joe Alt, yeah, you know. I just like neighbors, dog. Party, bro. Let me let me just. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let a Malik Neighbors highlight play in the background. <laughs> I'm gonna let a Malik Neighbors highlight play in the background while I uh, continue to move down this draft. What I gotta go to wide receiver. Then I gotta go to the M's, and then I gotta click neighbors. And after I after I click neighbors. I'm going to stop sharing that. I'm going to go back to the Bleach Report app. Let me see how I'm going to navigate this thing. Shout out to Bleach Report in their interface. It's a, it's a pretty solid interface. Boom. 
Malik Neighbors? Malik Neighbors? No film? No film? Where's my Malik Neighbors film? Let me see. Where is, let me see. Let me see where I can get Malik Neighbors film pulled up while I sit up here. While I sit up here and talk about these other pics. There's my Malik Neighbors film. So yeah, I'm going to let this uh this uh Neighbors film play while I continue to uh talk about this mock draft here, okay? Malik Neighbors should have should have been gone. But uh let's just keep going. JJ McCarthy is the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. They draft the Atlanta Falcons. So this is probably pre Okay, this is right at post combine here. Okay, so they got JJ McCarthy going here at, at uh at the Falcons here, but Kirk Cousins is there. So in real life, the Falcons are probably gonna draft somebody else. They're not gonna draft JJ McCarthy there. Uh at number nine, the Chicago Bears draft their franchise left tackle Olu. Let me see what his what, what his long name is. Olu I mean, look, we just gonna call him Olu for the duration of this of this exercise here. <laughs> we're not we're not gonna kind of play around with his name. I just want to see if I Olu Muyiwa. So Olu Fashino is your new Chicago Bear. Shots out. Let's pick this up a little bit. Here's offensive tackle number one. Here's my tackle number. At least Fuaga better than all these kids. He's ready to go fresh out the box now. It ain't nothing y'all can do to convince me that he is not. Um, Jared Verse. It 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 seems like the more time goes by, the more we kind of wake up about the edge conversation or the pass rush conversation, right? Dallas Turner is your uh, Dallas Turner from, from Bama. He shouldn't be too far behind, but Dallas Turner, your pass rush from, from Bama, he's your pure athletic guy, right? He doesn't really have a bunch of pass rush moves, but he might be one of the better athletes per his size in this draft. But then you got Liatu Latu from UCLA who has his injury concerns or whatever, but he's more of your technician. He's more of your, uh, technicals and your nuances, right? But Jerry versus right in the middle. And I, I kind of like him as the balanced pass rusher. Kind of like a Mario Kart. You got your fast carts. You got your big heavy carts. You got the ones in the middle of the Mario Luigi cars, the balanced ones. Jerry versus is your Mario Luigi balanced Mario Kart. But I like him right there. First cornerback off the board is Kenyon Mitchell. I don't hate it at all. It's either between him and Tyrion Arnold, but I like him. I like them both. And then we have J.C. Latham. Now, J.C. Latham is, is humongous as hell. He like six, seven, 345 some odd pounds. He's probably lost a little more weight since then. And the recent news coming out of, you know, you know, coming out of the draft world, I I got a very valuable draft draft person that I listen to, former scout. Uh, some people in chat know what I'm talking about. And he kind of reaches out to the other teams and whatnot. And he's he's hearing that teams look at J.C. Latham as a guard also. So that's another conversation we're going to have. And if a, if a handful of teams consider him a guard, then he might fall just a little bit. But right now he's uh, he's drafted by the Vegas Raiders. So there we are. And uh, then you have athlete Dallas Turner here. He's a, uh, he's a new old saint. I think something we have to keep eyes on is how far the Brock Bowers fall is is um is uh gonna go, because Brock Bowers is a very talented player and he is one of the he is like the the, the best tight end in this in his class or whatever. But I just wonder when when a when a team's gonna start treating tight ends like like running backs, because all your all all your favorite tight ends last year went day day two, day two day three. All of those are your favorite tight ends there. So I wonder is somebody gonna give a a give a 15th overall pick for the, for, 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 for Bowers. When you can take, man, hold on. Let me, let me just get my list of tight. Like I know Stover's there. I know um, Sanders is there. Like I'm not, you know, um, Sanat from Kansas state. Like, like, you know, uh, th th those guys tight end is really dependent on what team you go to. You know, if you got, if you got a solid passer of the football, that tight end nine times out of ten is 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 going to be solid. I can't say that about the Dallas Cowboys because you know, hey, they they have they have one of the most potent offenses in the league, and for some reason, I ain't gonna hate. It. I'm not gonna hate on this mock draft projection, dog. We we we're not even gonna bring Cowboy business into this. I love Byron Murphy. This is him going to Seattle makes a lot of sense, but I feel like Seattle draft a D tackle or a D line every single year, but. It's better than them drafting like a, a running back or a linebacker or something. Seattle normally love that first round pick somehow, but I love Byron Jones for them. Tyrion Arnold, who's my cornerback number one, fall to number 17. That makes it. I mean, uh, mm, Tyrion, Tyrion could be the first, the first defensive player off the board here. But uh, you know, hey, if he falls 17, that's a huge gift for Jacksonville. That's a and look, that's another thing about this draft, man. It's a lot of volatility here. We don't know. Where these corners, where these pass rushes, we don't know where the second run of wide receivers are uh, is going to happen because the the first run is going to be the big three. 
ain't no big three. It's just it's just big me. Neighbors of Dunze Harrison Jr., those are gonna be your that that first run on wide receivers, but the second run when Brian Thomas and A. D. Mitchell and Lab McConkey, I'm assuming it's gonna be at the back of the first round, front of the second. I don't know when that that run is gonna start, but there's also going to be a run on D lineman and a run on cornerback, right? So Tyrion Arnold is here, but Cooper DeGene is kind of is probably going to going to be an area. I, I don't know where um, Rake Straw from Missouri is going to be, but he's likely going to be in an area like this. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. But Jerzon Newton is a guy that when the draft process first started, and I'll just talk about Jerzon Newton. But when the draft process first started, he was like a top five or so guy, top ten guy. He was a defensive lineman. Let's see. Illinois is big 12. I can so I can I can I can play a little bit of Jerzon Newton there. Um Jerzon Newton being a guy that he was a top 10 pick at some point, like in the in the way too early mock draft series or whatever. Jerzon Newton was a guy that was super athlete, super first step, super ball get off, um, quick, powerful hands, right? So when I watched Newton. I was like, oh man, this this dude's about to be a bona fide top ten pick. And then the the more the draft process goes along, maybe it's interviews, maybe it's injuries. I don't know. I started seeing him in the in the thirties, and I'm like, man, I'm watching film on Newton. There's no way uh, after Aaron Donald uh, retiring and and moving on, we're not just gonna pretend like the kind of smaller. He's three hundred and six pounds or so, but he's six foot. The smaller quick at the line of scrimmage, powerful hands, bursty ball get off guy. There's no way he's going to fall to the thirties. I'm talking about Jerzon Newton. So, but now I'm seeing him like around 18 ish, 18 ish in these mock drafts or whatever. Right. So uh, I have no clue where, where Newton is going to go, but my beloved Dallas Cowboys pick at 24. So if he's in that era, if he, if he's in that area and he ends up, um, you know, just floating in the twenties, I don't see why you wouldn't take him because he's a character that I thought was going to be in the top teams. I thought, he was going to be up there with Verse and uh, some of these other guys. I, I thought he was going to be bona fide better than Byron Jones, but I guess it's just up to uh, it's it's up to debate at some point. Let me see. Let me see. I could just do this right here. All right, we're just going to do it like that, and I, I should be able to move my film over. So let's see. Now, Liatu Latu, that's my that's my edge one guy, but he's going to fall due to injury. We'll see how that goes. Jack Howard Johnson gets taken by, taken by the Pittsburgh Steelers. I feel like uh, some teams are going to look at uh, interior offensive line a little bit different. I know that the draft community, like we're really high on the interior guards, right, or the interior guys, Jackson Powers Johnson, Graham Barton. Uh, Zach Frazier and all those guys. I, you know, we're we're pretty high on those guys. Hell yeah, we got it done. Don DeMarco. Don DeMarco. So, um, but but I do think that once the the league starts drafting, and I think once they start to figure out interior guys and where you know, like like once the 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 draft gets going, I think we're gonna look at the interior offensive linemen, and they're probably gonna gonna fall a little bit. Not Graham Barton, though. I'll, I'll talk about Graham Barton whenever it's time to talk about Graham Barton because he had a damn pro day with all 32 teams there. I mean, everybody wanted a piece of Graham Barton. So I don't think he's going to be a guy um, that's going to fall 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. But Jackson Powers, Johnson, Zach Frazier, they they may. <sighs> now, Troy Fountain this year is kind of going to be like Darnell Wright was last year. You know, I just remember at, at some point in the draft process, Darnell Wright was a guy that we, we was like, hey, maybe he'll be at the back of the second round. And, and, and before you know it, Graham Barton went to, uh, I mean, pardon me, uh, Darnell Wright. He ended up being like a top, top, top pick, like one of the top offensive line off the board. First or second, I, I believe, second offensive line off the board. Troy Fats is not going to be around at 21, dog. That's why I call him Troy Fats. That's me, me and my guy Will still call him. Cooper DeGene goes Eagles. They badly need cornerback and linebacker help, but you know how it go. Bob Robinson is an interesting character because I lied and said that Dallas Turner may be the most athletic guy per poundage in this in this draft. But man, that, that's that's Chop Robinson. Chop is a pass rush, but I think he could be just a pure linebacker. But we'll see. And Marius Mims, one of my one of my favorite offensive linemen, he gets drafted to my beloved Dallas Cowboys, and he's a very interesting in, interesting character because. First of all, there, there are people saying that, oh, well, he's only played in eight games. I think that's false. I think he only started eight games. He started like six, 
uh this year like a couple last year but he's played a bunch of games so our marius mims is the right tackle number 65 here our marius mims played in a bunch of games and as i show you the film you're gonna you're gonna see uh see him go against various teams so he's played more than eight he's only started eight but it, but last year um he was a rotational guy he would come in but he was an nfl prospect then he just didn't have all the experience but um the one thing i that i love about uh mims and i'm i'm, I'm always constantly going back to these storylines and common opponents let me let me just show y'all something y'all see number 44 on the left side of your screen that's jt tool malau he's a pass rusher for ohio state jt tool malau is on film whooping joe alt and whooping olu fashion this dude is a menace and he went back to school so he'll be he'll be he'll be coming out next year but you want to know who had no problems dealing with jt to now number 44 from ohio state is your right tackle our marius mims and i believe it, you know you can you can say what you want to about his play experience right and he is rough around the edges and he could use a little bit of refinement but damn that's what coaching is for right find me the dude that beats up on pardon me y'all find me the dude that beats up on the dude that gives everybody else problems right for example rashawn slater i had a scouting report for rashawn slater and it read as simple as hey he beat chase young he beat the hell out of chase young <laughs> that was rashawn slater scouting report and just don't overthink it uh the, the first db cam kitchens he plays all over the station there he goes to the green bay packers Brian Thomas here, the next uh the next run on wide receiver maybe starts here and he looked like Marvin Harrison Jr. a little bit, but he goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If I'm a Cardinals fan and you do lay McKinstry 27th overall, I wouldn't be very happy. So whoever's on the bleach report scouting staff that got Kool-Aid McKinstry at 27th overall, cut it out. Keon Coleman goes to goes to the Buffalo Bills, and that's a fantastic fit for him. Um Nate Wiggins, the cornerback from Clemson, he was like a top 11 guy at some point in some of these mocks, but I didn't personally see it. Um, but seeing him fall, fall makes a little bit of sense. And here's Tyler Guyton going to the uh, to the Baltimore Ravens with the biggest shirt I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he, he plays right tackle. He's another character that's rough around the edge. So you're going to have to work on his technique here. And the San Francisco 49ers, if they get Graham Barton, I'm going to be sick, but all 32 teams don't even put me on because on, on, y'all all 32 teams showed up at his damn pro day that dude is not gonna make it at 31 but whatever and the kansas city chiefs um it seems like the bleach report staff is accusing the kansas city chiefs of being the new oakland raiders of just getting all the fast people right i think the chiefs and the dolphins are teams that just value speed like that in that way it's like no matter what oh robbie anderson i'm not gonna call them chosen oh robbie anderson's the the fastest Jalen Wilds, the fastest uh, Tyreek Hill, Hill's the fastest Raheem Mostert, a chains the fat. I think they, I think the the Dolphins and the Chiefs, not even the Chiefs, but especially like don't 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 let the Dolphins see Xavier worry about that. I think the Dolphins are 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 more likely to get them because they like all the fastest guys, man. They like uh they like speed. Okay, I'm not gonna hang around here too long. I just kind of want to see. I just kind of uh want to see what's happening here. Boom, boom, boom. So we got Carolina Panthers, A.D. Mitchell. I like A.D. Mitchell a lot. The first running back comes off the board here at 37. Cooper B.B., Derek Pony. I like both of those. You got Bo Nix going uh 42nd overall at quarterback. That is trash. I love Jalen Polk. The pieces teams are going to – um teams are definitely going to be looking at him. And um I don't see a lot of people ranking Jalen Polk all that high, but – He's going to be high. The Dallas Cowboys take Jonathan Brooks. I'm afraid of that knee. Ugh, I hate that. And Malachi Coyle is my favorite wide receiver. He's going to go to the San Francisco 49ers. He's, he's projected to be a Debo Samuel type guy. Tavondre Sweat goes to the Arizona Cardinals at 66 overall. Somebody from the Bleach Report scout uh, staff snuck. Say that five times fast. Bleach Report scouting staff snuck Shou, uh, Shou Smith Wade in here at 79. I think that's a bit high for him, but not my business. I even think this is a little high for Zion to how but we'll see. Marshawn Lloyd running back going to San Francisco 49ers. I hate it, but the rich keep getting richer. And Johnny Wilson goes 101. I think he's going to be your um, Darren Waller type. Like, hey, you're a humongous receiver. Let's put you at tight end. Okay? Yo, chat. 
I love y'all to pieces, man. I would normally do a stream for an hour, but uh, I got to run around today. Got to do some stuff. But if y'all want to see some more of my work, tap in with me on YouTube at Vach Lombardi, V-O-C-H-L-O-N-B-A-R-D-I. This was a was a pretty solid mock draft. I love that the that the Dallas Cowboys got our Marius Mims. They got a running back. And they uh, who was the, the Cowboys last pick? Brendan Rice? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take Jerry Rice's son to come in and run some routes, you know, play slot maybe across the road whenever we get there. Um, I would love to do this again, man. So shout out to Bleach Report. Appreciate y'all for having me. Download the Bleach Report app. Y'all probably got it already because y'all watching me now. But download the Bleach Report app for somebody else. Literally take their phone, steal it down. Well, don't steal it. Give it back. But download the app. Go find Vosh Lombardi on there. Follow me and put hey, download all of your all of your favorite tabs and all that. Okay. I go back to uh, work on YouTube on Monday, uh, April 1st. We're gonna do April Fool. So come through. I will be there. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski. Till next time, man. Love y'all. Peace.